This is the day that the Lord has made. I love the sounds of a congregation and conversation with, uh, with each other as we uh, gather together, uh, having perhaps not seen each other since last week. It's been several weeks since you've seen me, uh, and I'm going to tell you about my vacation during the children's time. Um, but I want to point your attention to uh, the, um, the single page insert, which uh, half page insert, which, also, which contains the uh, brief statement of faith, which we'll be using, and also uh, the lyrics of uh, the anthem uh, that we'll, the choir will be uh, using this morning. Uh, I also want to uh, call your attention to our usual um, series of uh, announcements relating to the various weekly activities at, within our congregation that you find on the larger insert, uh, uh, including uh, under keeping in touch a little section called Breaking the Code, which um, outlines uh, uh, what various uh, uh, abbreviations stand for uh, that you might find in other places. Um, it also contains our uh, known listing uh, of uh, family and friends who have requested uh, that we be in prayer with them. Coming, uh, leaving my office this morning, coming into the sanctuary, um, uh, I was um, stopped for just a moment by the Sanders, and um, they shared with me uh, uh, an event that had happened uh, in their family life um, at the passing of uh, Carnation's mother uh, this, um, about a week ago. Where, um, and, and, and Basile's biological mother about a week ago. Um, so during our time of prayer, we will, uh, the special prayer this morning in honor of Mother's Day, I'll remember, um, uh, I'll remember your mom in prayer. Let us worship God.
Linda. Linda. What's up? <laughs> of all the hymns and all the hymn books, you had to choose how firm a foundation. Oh, how firm a foundation uh, squeezes my heart. Um, because of the connotation it has in, in my life. Um, that's a story for another time uh, today. Um, uh, well, let me have a test. What day is today? Uh, there are still some cards left at Walgreens in case anybody needs to, to go out um, uh, after church. I... Um, I've been thinking about Mother's Day a lot this year as my mother has transitioned into uh, assisted living. And uh, many of you know how that transition uh, can often be stressful and hard, and it always uh, brings with it changes, maybe some unexpected and some that you would expect. Um, one, so I'm thinking about that as I say this prayer. Um, I also thought, well, you know, my go-to book when I uh, uh, am having a little difficulty deciding how I want to shape something is to go to a hymnal, because our hymns carry with them such a tremendous wealth of, of uh, experience and emotion and theology and, and meaning into our lives. And so, of course, as you, would, as you might expect, in, in the back of any hymnal, there's usually not a little, uh, uh, um, in the contents, there's not a, a little rubric that says Mother's Day. So I had to think, think, think. And I remembered uh, uh, a hymn that uh, uh, I learned uh, at, through the New Methodist hymnal, um, which now is 30 years old, but that New Methodist hymnal um, in an ecumenical group that I was in, a service, and we were using it. Uh, and, and I've heard choirs sing it as anthems, and um, it's, uh, it's one that's uh, done by, uh, the text is written by Natalie Sleeth, who is a, a very uh, prolific uh, anthem writer, and now some of those anthems have been changed into uh, hymnal form. Um, so we, we do have it in the new Presbyterian hymnal, which is not in our pews, uh, and it's in the old Methodist new hymnal. Um, but the, the title of it uh, is, In the Bulb There is a Flower. And so I've been thinking about Mother's Day this year in terms of connectivity and relationship, and that will come into play uh, during a time of our message uh, in a little while. And um, uh, Carnation coming to my office this morning and sharing with me the experience in her life uh, reminds me of the connectivity we have, not just in our families, but the wider connectivity of a congregation which, to which we have committed ourselves through our profession of faith or through our uh, joining of the church in one way or shape, one form or another. So at first I want to um, read, the, uh, uh, read some of, a couple of the verses of this three-verse hymn. Uh, then uh, I want to um, pray for uh, Carnation and Bidzel uh, on the passing of their biological mother uh, and for that family the Sanders family too, uh, and then a more generalized prayer for Mother's Day. Let us pray. In the bulb there is a flower, in the seed an apple tree, in cocoons a hidden promise, but butterflies will soon be free. In the cold and snow of winter, there's a spring that waits to be unrevealed until its season, something God alone can see. There's a song in every silence, seeking word and melody, 
There's a dawn in every darkness bringing hope to you and me. From the past will come the future, what it holds, a mystery, unrevealed until its season, something God alone can see. Gracious God, you place us in families uh, and you nurture us along the way. We thank you for all those relationships that are that help us to thrive as we grow, uh, that help us to grow in our knowledge of you, and that have helped us to become the people we are today. We, we are mindful, O oh God, of all the challenges of being family, of its complexities, of its sometimes sad moments, and sometimes hard challenges. So, O oh God, this day may we set those aside and think of the connections that we have with that person whom, with whom we identify as mother. We pray particularly this morning, O oh God, for the Sanders family, but especially for Garnation and Bidzel, as their mother has gone to, to be with you. We pray for them and the various feelings that they have. We pray that their sad hearts would find strength and hope in the love that surrounds them. And we ask that you help us, O oh God, to be with them in ways and with the Sanders family that will nurture them and help them to grow. We are grateful, O oh God, for the connections that we have through the generations with those whom we have identified as mother. We thank you for cares and concern, the care and concern that has been poured into our lives, and we are grateful for every grace and moment of meaning which we have learned from them. Each of us, O oh God, seeks forgiveness for those times when we have acted in ways that have not been ones that would build up or promote growth or enrich love. So, O oh God, today, each and every one of us, mother and father and sister and brother and daughter and aunt and uncle and all the relationships with which we, which we can name, we ask that you strengthen us in the resurrection of our Christ who gives us at the last a victory unrevealed until its season something sometimes only God can see Amen I heard my name echoed in the canyons. I have been called by God. I am held in love. I have a message to share. I lift my voice in thanks and prayer. Our hymn is 144, Alleluia, Sing to Jesus.
by God's great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Please join me in our prayer of confession. God, above all and within all, you desire a harmony of heart and mind, of humanity and creation that flows as steadily as a mountain stream. Yet how often we block the flow. We prefer to notice the differences, point out flaws, look for contradictions, the interconnections with all creation, the shared breath of the universe, get lost in a sea of distinctions. We let divisive words pass our challenge and let skin color and dress and language push us apart. Healing God, weave us together, break down the walls that divide us, and let your unity flow within us. In the name of Jesus, amen. If you loved me, says the Lord, you will keep my commandments. I am the vine, and you are the branches, says the Lord. Those who abide in me, and I in them, bear much fruit. In Christ our sins are forgiven. Glory, glory, glory. Glory be to God. Lord, giver of mercy, you are the cross, giver of mercy, you are the Lord, giver of mercy. Please be seated. I invite our boys and girls to come forward, please. Um, I just want to make a quick announcement. Um, this is the family that y'all have been praying for. They came all the way from North Carolina for a wedding this weekend. So I want to take a second to thank you guys for your uh, prayers and give a praise report. He is now crawling. Um, so we are ecstatic in his progress. So thank you, everybody. Oh, I see everybody is all spread out across two pews this morning. Well, I have something to show you. I don't know if anybody told you, but the last two Sundays I've been on vacation. And we went to the beach. And it was fun. And the water in North Carolina was warm enough so that I could go swimming well, like swimming up to here, every day. One time I got my hair wet in the waves. And as my, Jane and I were driving back and forth, I remembered when I was your age and our family would pile into our car, it was this great big old Pontiac green station wagon. And we, there was no third seat, so two of us had to sit way in the what we called the way back, which you can't do anymore because of safety. But I found this picture by Norman Rockwell, who's a very famous painter and illustrator, and it shows a family that's on their way to the beach and on their way back. The top is on their way to the beach, and the bottom is on the way back. So I just want you to look at that for a minute. You can see the top, and then the bottom. Right, one way's going, and one way's coming home. And you 
you see that? In the top one, what does it look like? In the top one, everybody's all excited, and the father and the mother and a, one of the children is sitting in the front seat, and uh, the young boy is looking out the window, and so is the dog, and the sister's blowing a bubble with her chewing gum, and it looks like grandma's in the back, and there's two other children in the back, and on the way home, what's happening? The bottom slide. They all look tired. That's exactly right. So do you think they had a good day together? Because they all got tired when they were coming home. They were tired because they had so much fun. That's exactly what I that's exactly how I think about it too. And you can see and uh, the kids are all sort of sad that they're coming home and they're not hanging out the window anymore. Isn't that right? How many of you have ever been on a car trip with everybody packed into the same car? driving a long distance. Yeah. And when you leave home, what's it like? Feels pretty good because you know you're going somewhere, and usually that place is special. I mean, not like, not like Kroger's or someplace like that, but, but like to the beach or the mountains or a lake. Yes? Kind of like riding a bus and down the windpiece. Like what now? Riding a bus when it's all noisy, yes. And, ha and even, maybe even at the end of the day, your bus is noisy too, when you come home from school. My bus was always very quiet when we came home from school because everybody was so tired from studying so much stuff during the day. All that new stuff, like our numbers and letters and things that we were learning. The way our life is in learning about God and love and loving one another is kind of like this picture. Sometimes we get all excited about learning new things and then sometimes we're just tired out. I had one person tell me one time, they said to me, I've been going to Sunday school for, eight, for 65 years, and I'm tired of it. They were tired of going to Sunday school for that long. But I bet if they knew about our Wednesday night program, they would be excited to, to come and be a part of that. Don't you think? How many of you are part of the Wednesday night Logos program? Come on Wednesday nights. A little more than half, yeah. Well, it's good to see you, and I hope all of you can come next year. So I want you to know, as, as you, I want you to remember as you learn about God and Jesus, there'll be some times when you're really excited, and it'll be like you're heading towards a vacation because you're going to learn new stuff that'll be really meaningful to you. And then other times you might feel a little bit worn out with the things that you, you learn, and and. You have to rest up in order to re be ready to have your next vacation. So right now I'm resting up <sighs> till my next vacation. <laughs> and you're helping me rest, being with you. So let's have a prayer. Come around over here, those of you that can. We're, we'll join the circle. Include as many as we can. And repeat after me. Gracious God, I give you thanks for good times 
and for tired times. Let us look way ahead to that next time when we will be excited about learning and loving and vacation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you all very much. Sometimes vacation looks like speeding off to go to the program in the back, doesn't it? We have a scripture reading this morning from John 14. Um, and it's part of uh, what's called a farewell discourse. But we'll get to that in just a minute because I hear rumblings in the choir behind me. <laughs> Because the choir is going to sing first. <laughs> the reality of God's love comes to us in many forms. I've often been most transformed when that love has come to me through another person, one in whose heart Christ's love has taken residence. It's a humbling thing indeed that a whole...
Thank you, choir. John 14 begins a several chapter long ver a series of verses that are sometimes called the farewell discourse or the farewell passage uh, and are taking place during that time when uh, Jesus is uh, with the disciples at celebrating Passover. In other words, uh, what, what has come to be in our tradition, the Lord's Supper. Uh, this section is much more um, enriched and fuller, more fully described than the passages that we see relating to the Lord's Supper in um, Paul, uh, in um, Matthew, and Mark, uh, and Luke. This particular section uh, is most commonly used uh, at the graveside, uh, at a time when um, people are standing on uh, the edge of a, uh, of a yawning depression in the ground and wondering what's next because something indeed has been shaken in relationship somewhere with someone um, and, and everything seems as if it's up for grabs. And so in the tradition of the church, in the long tradition of the church, this verse comes, the, these verses come as ones that are, are read at the, at the time of someone's passing. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to Jesus, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to Thomas, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. For from now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to Philip, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I, in, I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. And in fact, will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. May God add a blessing to our hearing of this God's holy word, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It is almost like a game in our family, and it begins about the last day of Beach Week each year. Which rental house will be the best house ever of all the ones that we see around us? And uh, that is the goal, the timer's ticking, location and price and bedrooms and bathrooms and 
and who will be present all factor in. One of the cousins this year suggested that we get the 21-bedroom, 21-bathroom house next year. That would be like all of us going someplace together for a whole week. Woo! In the depths of winter, when deposits and payments are due, the planning will take final shape and probably more reality. Beach Week brings to light the truth of this week's gospel for me. After all the questioning which the disciples pose to Jesus, he makes it clear that the most important thing is relationships. Disciples do not always understand this. They seek a road map. Which way? How can we know the way, Jesus? Tell us the way. Nations often go awry on this part of the gospel. Too often we worry about the mechanics of how to get it done and we neglect the needs of others. And sometimes we neglect our own needs at that point. Too often we seek to fulfill our own goals without seeing the connections that we have with others. If we possess a gospel sense of caring, if we have taken love of love God and love neighbor as self to heart, if we have been listening to Jesus with gospel ears, then we begin to, to feel as he did the relationships that we have not just with family at the beach. We discover and seek to nurture and grow our connection with God. Gospel John claims that we can do that very thing through our relationship with Jesus. Our hearts are troubled if there is darkness without light in our lives. Our hearts are troubled when we feel isolated and disconnected from others, when there is reconciliation that may be looming out there that's needed. Our hearts are troubled when we speak goodbyes at any death in, distancing from, or disruption within the relationship that you and I have with God and with others. Gathered families leave the beach heading toward distant homes. Uh, graduating youth in the, this season begin to scatter to distant cities to, to find their future. Friends and family gathered at a graveside pray their goodbyes. If these scenes of tearing in the connective tissue of relationships were Ken Burns' documentary, uh, the old Southern Harmony hymn might be playing in the background, and it would gather up the, the dual feelings of loss in the present and hope for what lies ahead. And the sort of background rubric that you could put over that particular season section of the Burns documentary, like he often does, the title might be, Do Not Let Your Hearts Be Troubled. The hymn goes like this, Come ye sinners, poor and needy, weak and wounded, sick and sore, Jesus stands ready to save you, full of pity, love and power. And the refrain is that wonderful verse, I will arise and go to Jesus. He will embrace me in his arms in the arms of my dear Savior, oh, there are 10,000 charms. Come ye thirsty, come and welcome God's free bounty, glorify true belief and true repentance, every grace that brings you nigh. Come ye weary, heavy laden, lost and ruined by the fall. If you tarry till you're better, you may never come at all. Not let your hearts be troubled, 
Jesus speaks to the disciples at a time when they have questions, when they worry what's next. Jesus comes to us and says to us, in times of transition, in times of hurt, in times of pain, in times when we're feeling disconnected from, another, from others, do not let your hearts be troubled. Commentator David Lowe sums it up this way. The first line of this, pas this familiar passage is, is really out of kilter with the rest of the passage, uh, which is uh, more or less a, a, a poem about I am. I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. Uh, and those of you who remember your, your in-depth Bible study, remember I am is the translation for, in the Old Testament, for that God that Moses uh, meets on Sinai. So John picks this theme up, I am, I am, I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Jesus, after all, Lois continues, is preparing his disciples, his friends, for his departure. He knows this will be incredibly challenging for them and so begins with words intended to bring comfort. Do not let your hearts be troubled. But they seem to fall short of the mark. The disciples' hearts are troubled, very troubled, and they ask many questions. Caroline Lewis, in her comments on working in working preacher, takes a similar path. Sometimes we want answers, even as what we really need is relationship. So perhaps this week, you and I should come clean about all the unanswered questions that are part and parcel of our faith in order to remind each other that whatever our questions, whatever our doubts, whatever our knowns, Jesus makes himself available to us to you and to me. Indeed, Jesus still offers himself to us, inviting us into a relationship that may not answer all of our questions, but ultimately transcends them. Do not let your hearts be troubled. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, you may be also. And that, brothers and sisters, will be the best house ever. Amen. Our hymn is 306, Fairest Lord Jesus.
Please join me as we share together our brief statement of faith, uh, which is on the half-page insert uh, and was um, edited by uh, one of our confirmation class members. In life and in death, we belong to God. Through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, we trust in the one triune God, the Holy One of Israel, whom alone we worship and serve. In sovereign love, God created the world and makes everyone equally in his image, male and female of every race and people, to live as one community. In gratitude to God, empowered by the Spirit, we strive to serve Christ in our daily tasks and to live holy and joyful lives even as we watch for God's new heaven and new earth, praying, Come, Lord Jesus. With believers in every time and place, we rejoice that nothing in our life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Our Christ calls us uh, to be in relationship with one another and, and within that relationship to, to share the love of God and Jesus Christ uh, not only with each other but with the world. And so uh, we make this offering uh, as a part of our ministry and mission and, and hope that we may do that through the offering of our, through the presentation of our tithes and our offerings. give you thanks for this, uh, the blessings of life which we have received. And uh, we ask that you bless the gifts that we have given uh, that for the proclamation of your word and the doing of your will here and throughout the world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. And may we present our gifts to set the table. As they are coming forward, let us remember how it was uh, that Jesus, during that time when he was gathered with his disciples, uh, in sharing words such as the ones that we have heard today, Jesus gathered them all together uh, and shared with them the Passover meal. Within the context of that meal together, Jesus said words that we bring forth to remind us of the love of God and Jesus Christ for the world.
the Apostle Paul uh, reminds us uh, in his letter to uh, the Corinthians that he has received these words which he passed along to the Corinthians and which I pass along to you, that on the night on which Jesus was betrayed, he, he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take and eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, when the supper was finished, Jesus took the cup of thanksgiving and he blessed it and he gave it to his his disciples and said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink from it, all all of you. Do this in remembrance of me. He also reminds us that as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we remain one with Christ, one with Christ in Christ and one through Christ, connected in relationship with each other until that time when he comes again. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. We thank you, O God, for the many ways in which you work in our lives. We thank you for all those past tables around which we have gathered in home and in church and in community, in which we have felt a oneness of spirit, a commonality of purpose, and an underlying love. We thank you that for the hands that prepared those meals throughout our lives, and we thank you for the hands of Christ who through his actions and with his words prepared this meal for us this day. So, O God, bless us in our participation together, in our sharing of the bread and our drinking from the cup. For we do so remembering your Son, Jesus, in whose love we find our life and through whose light we shine for you. We make this prayer in the name of our Lord Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
One last hymn, 473, for the beauty of the earth. As you go this morning to family gatherings or celebrations or uh, whatever you have in front of you, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord be turning his face towards you and grant you peace now and in all the days to come. Amen.